Hey everyone, today we're gonna talk about a move called fist under elbow. This is a counter to the underhook position. Underhooks are pretty dangerous to let somebody get. When you're grappling, you get in close, uh, they come in, they get the double underhooks on you or they get a single underhook on you. This creates a position where they have more control over you than you do of them. And they can easily get a takedown or just disrupt your position and unbalance you. So this move, fist under elbow, is gonna counter the underhook and wrap the arm and give us a shoulder lock option. If you're facing bigger opponents or somebody starts to counter, we're gonna show the counter how you can stop it, and then we're gonna go to a couple of takedowns at the end, like reaping leg takedown and leg hook takedown. Hope you enjoy the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, have a good day. When we're in a grappling position with our opponent, if he has the outside of my arms, I'm already dealing with a disadvantaged position. So you'll see, we'll start grappling and we'll start circling for dominance on the, in, on the outside. If he gets the outside line, he's gonna be able to go over the top and get this underhook position. This is not a good position for me right here. He has the strength, he has the advantage. And what, he can overpower me and start rocking me and start twisting me sideways back and forth. So <clears throat> when he goes for this, for here's another example, is he shoots the back arm and changes his stance. He cuts into the underhook, he has control of my wrist over here, and now he has, for example, a thigh lift throw. We're gonna wanna shut that position down before we get there. I don't want him to be able to swim and get here, or now he can change again and swim this hand under, and we're back to this position. One of the first things we're gonna do to shut this underhook down is the shoulder lockout. So as he goes to swim, I cut through, and I'm gonna lift my hand like this, right above his elbow. So I wanna attack the joint, and this hand's gonna come up and push against his shoulder the opposite way. Once I get through his arm, I'm going to attach this hand. I could just go over here, but I'm gonna attach this for control and extra power. So you have that fist under elbow here, if you wanted to do a quick jam, or a little bit more controlled manner, you can attach your own forearm. As this comes through, work right here. Let the, let the arm slide past your forearm, and that's when you wanna shoot up through. If you go early, then you basically just lost your opportunity to get that lockout, you want to work your timing, cut in, get the shoulder going back as this lifts up, and now I can finish my lockout. If he attacks with this side, it's no different. I go here, and then bring my arm through right above the elbow, reach up. The only difference is my hip is back, so I have less twist power at first. If I were on this side, I can hip into it, but I still have an effective lockout here. As we go for the shoulder lock, Thomas, as he does his underhook, I come in, I go here. Now he's bigger than me. So I may get good timing, I may get the lock here, I jam up his shoulder. But he has an easy counter here where he starts to sidestep. Now this is, one, it nullifies what I'm doing here. Two, it puts his arm in a position where now he can punch me, elbow me, he can grab my throat, my ears, poke me in the eyes, whatever he wants to do. I have two arms to his one arm. This is never a good position to be in for very long. If we were gonna do something, let's say I was working an arm drag, that has to be a very quick transition. It can't be something where I'm holding him here 
or I'm holding him here, hanging out, because he's got this other hand waiting to punch me. So if I go here and he sidesteps me, I'm immediately in that counter zone. This is bad. So we're going to talk about how to stop this next. Now, we're going to show the counter to the counter how I'm going to stop him from being able to punch me in the face with this other hand. So as he goes for his underhook, I attempt the fist under elbow, the shoulder lockout, and he starts to turn on me. I want to take my hand from this position. I'm going to slide right over and push into the trachea with the spear hand. I can also switch to the eagle claw. So as I cut in, I go here. Start my lockout, he starts to move, and I go right around the side of the windpipe. Thumb goes in one side, and the other fingers cut in on this side of the windpipe, the other side. So again, he comes in, I go here, he moves, and I go right to the spear hand. Very alternate variation, cut in, I go right to here. If I know he's a bigger guy, and I know he's going to be able to shut this down, he's just stronger, I may go right to that to begin with so that I don't mess around with fighting this strong arm here. I cut in, go here. Now, that strike, it's hard for him when I'm pushing into his throat to be able to, to reach me, one. Two, he's feeling a little uh, uncomfortable right here. So he's not really looking at that. He may even grab my arm to try to shut that down and pull it away. When we go to the next step, we're going to follow this up with a reaping leg throw. So I come in, I do my shoulder lock. I go here to his throat. Now you see his position right here. I want to take this leg and I'm going to come in behind him and reap. Once I'm here, if I'm just a striker, I can hold his arm, start punching him here. If he, blo if he blocks his face, I can go to the ribs, start alternating. or I can maintain this pressure on his neck, keep my wrap on my forearm, come forward into a horse stance, and look up. And that basically turns this move into an arm bar, from a shoulder lockout to a takedown to an arm bar. So I'm here, this hand has to be over here, and then I look up. same move off the front hand has a little bit of a liability that can come up. So as he shoots for his underhook and I go for the shoulder lock, he starts the forward posture on me. And this starts to shut down and save his shoulder. So right here, what happens if I still try the reaping leg, this puts me in a really bad position. Now he has the throw. He just lifts this leg, boom, and down I go. So what I want to do, as he postures forward, instead of coming here and trying to pull off a reaping leg, is I'm going to use my leg, my leg hook. So if I need to, I can alter my position a little bit, but I'm going to take this leg, cut behind it. I like to go right here at the top of the calf, and then come down. I still have control of the arm to be able to finish the arm bar, but if I lose it somehow, I can just go to the mount, and start working a striking position. So I go here, he leans forward on me. I don't have a lot of time to hang out because now he's gonna to start to turn here and try to hit me in the head. So I wanna get here, feel him lean forward, and come in and drop. It's a little detail here with this arm. In the past variations, we showed this extension right here. Right here, I start with that extension. But as I go for the leg hook, what I want to do, instead of trying to push into him where he has this forward angle, is I'm going to let my arm collapse into my shoulder. And as I do that, I use my shoulder to press the takedown instead of my hand. Now from here, you can see I still have the wrap. I start to look up. I can go for the arm bar. If I lose this somehow, I fall a little uncontrolled, come forward, and I can start working from a mount position. 
He shoots for the underhook off the lead. I go for the shoulder lock. He leans forward on me. Leg hook. Follow him in. He just rolled out on me. Cut forward and start working your punches. <laughs> 